Okay, the game up for review this time is Alundra for the PlayStation. This is actually another working designs game, uh, although this one has a lot less uh, naughty humor. <laughs> There's still a little bit though. Um, I was actually really pleased to play this game because uh, I've been playing so many turn-based RPGs lately that playing an action-adventure game was uh, quite refreshing. A breath of fresh air. Um, Alundra plays a lot like a Zelda game, only uh, turned up to 11. <laughs> um, the combat and puzzles are, are a lot more difficult than anything you'd find in Zelda. Um, that being said, there are some things you can do later on, and I'll talk about that later that make the game easier. Um, another thing that sets it apart from the Zelda games is it's got a pretty dark story. Um, a lot of characters die in the game, and uh, in a way, it, it kind of, you benefit from their deaths, so it kind of makes you feel a little bit guilty. At least it made me feel a little bit guilty, but um, that aspect of the game is just really well done. Uh, it's nice to see a game that's like a Zelda game that takes sort of a darker approach. You don't, I can't honestly think of anything that's done that um, other than this, so that was nice. Also, uh, the villain, the antagonist of the game, is pretty badass looking. Um, and when you find out what he is, it makes him even more badass. Um, and it adds a, another layer of depth to the story, which is kind of nice. Graphically, the game is uh, pretty well done. Um, I've heard people compare it to the Landstalker game. I don't know if that's a series or not. I've never actually played Landstalker. It was for the Sega Genesis, I believe. I'll probably have to look into um, checking that out eventually. I've got a lot of games on my list for doing YouTube videos for, so I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> I was pleased with the visuals of um, the main city, Anoa, which you're going to spend a lot of time in if you play the game. Um, it was very pretty. I liked it. And there were these little fucking black crows with red eyes that looked so evil. And it's like, for the longest time, I always thought that when they were perched on a specific house, it meant something, but I don't really think it does. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. It's something to look in though, into, though. Conspiracy theory. Um, graphically, the only thing that bugged me was the main character himself. Um, he looks kind of like a tool. He's kind of lame looking. And I really, really wish that uh, as you got newer armor and weapons and gear and stuff that he would have changed his look. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. That, that's one thing they could have done to really improve the game, in my opinion. Even though it's not even that big a deal. I don't know why. It's just... I kind of like having a badass looking main character. The game follows a collection progression, similar to what the Zelda games do, where you have to collect these gems from the bosses at the end of each dungeon. Uh, it's a little less pronounced in this game, though, as it is in Zelda games, because um, you don't actually get one at the end of every dungeon, it's more like every two to three dungeons you'll get one. Um, still, it does follow that sort of same formula. Which is fine. I mean, it's it's a crutch, I guess, but it's needed, supposedly. As I said earlier, the game can be pretty tough, but um, there are a couple things that you can do to make it easier. 
Uh, and you'll actually see at the end of this video, I fight a boss and he goes down pretty quickly. Normally he would not go down that quickly. Um, I actually took the time to get the ultimate weapon in the game, which is surprisingly ridiculously easy to get. All you have to do is die 16 to 25 times and use the quick restart feature. And then you go talk to the statue and he gives it to you. I mean, it's time consuming, sure, but it definitely helps to have an emulator. In fact, this game was made easier for me all around because I had an emulator. If I didn't have the emulator that I was using, it would have been kind of a pain in the ass to reset puzzles, because um, the puzzles in this game are very tough. Uh, in the beginning, they're not so tough. It's it's more like around the halfway point when you start to get brain busters, where you may want to look up the answer or whatever. But um, for me, what I always found tough is not so much the brain busting puzzles, but the platforming ones where you have to jump from moving things to other moving things, and, or you have to jump across platforms really quick before timer runs out. Those are the ones that I just ugh. I hate shit like that. I've always hated shit like that. But having the save state feature really helps. <laughs> Instead of having to, you know, reload your game or, or leave the room and come back in, you just press a little button and bam, you can retry the puzzle again. <laughs> so that's helpful. I, I definitely recommend playing the game on an emulator, but um, it's nice to have the actual copy too. I just wanted to show people that I actually do have the physical copies of these games. It's just that uh, my PlayStation is locked away in storage, so yeah. And it's just easier to record shit on an emulator. Um, another way you can make the game easy for yourself is there are these things called Gilded Falcons that you can collect, and if you collect all of them, which, you know, obviously you can't do until the end of the game, but if you collect them all, and hand them into this guy, he gives you a weapon that's a wand that you can't actually do any physical attack with, but it gives you infinite magic, which makes you invincible. Because there's a spell you can cast over and over again that just completely heals you. Another thing that sets this game apart is the length. I clocked in at just under 30 hours, which is incredible for a game of this nature, of this style. Um, I mean, most Zelda games are like, what, 10 hours, maybe, 8, something like that? This one was just under 30. That's like a full-length traditional RPG length, so that's, that's quite good in my opinion. Alright, so let's rate this. I give the game an 8 out of 10, mostly for its story. Um, the graphics are nice too though, the music is really good, there are some catchy tunes. Um, it would be awesome if this game had a sequel that didn't suck ass. Uh, <laughs> Lunger 2 is just big time fail sauce, it literally has nothing to do with the first game. At all. You don't even play as Alundra, and it's still called Alundra 2, it's, it's, it's like the company made the second game, not knowing what they were going to release it as, and they were like, hmm, well, a lot of people liked Alundra 1, how about we just call this Alundra 2 to increase its sales? Uh, this is doubly worse, because the ending of the first game is, it, it totally leaves the field open for a good sequel. Eh, oh well. So, give this game a shot, and comment below on what you think of it. Just don't be a dick like YouTube user SilentHillMaster755. Thanks for watching.